Hi, my name is Daniela Damiano Guerrero and I go to John Brampton Primary School. We've been learning a song about the Jubilee. The Queen's Jubilee song, which is called the People's Song, is the most important uh, song because it's, we're celebrating her 70 years of being on the throne. And it's all about how people should um, like respect the Queen and follow in her footsteps. And I think I've been doing well at it. Rehearsals have been going really well. I think I'm getting good at the songs. The rehearsals are really fun because we all include everyone's ideas for actions and we all have a great time. I'm feeling nervous because we're going to be on stage and I, and I have a solo because there'll be uh, about 300 people watching. I'm excited but kind of nervous because there's going to be a lot of people and I don't really do well with a lot of people. It's like a real orchestra, a real conductor, a real audience. I'm feeling really excited. Do you know any interesting facts about the Queen? Uh, well, she used to have a husband named Prince Philip, but sadly he died. She is the longest reigning monarch that, that has ever lived in, in, the, in Great Britain. She has a, a lot of royal family living there, like grandsons, great-grandsons, great-grandkids and everything. She's old. Hello, um, my name's Robert Hyman. I'm lucky enough to be a composer and a conductor and a, an arranger and basically a musical odd job man. And I was an Ilford boy, born and bred, and uh, went to Cleveland Junior School and uh, Ilford County High School for boys. I owe them a lot, really, because they instilled in me this love of music that led me to have a whole career in music. And now it's really lovely to be actually coming back home but the Queen's Jubilee, we want to do something special. And I said, okay. They said, we know you compose. And I went, yes. Would you write us a Jubilee song? And I'm going, ooh, that's a bit of a big ask. It's a momentous occasion. You, you've got to get that right. I said, well, I can, I can do that, but I'm going to need some help. If it's a song to be sung by all the kids in Redbridge, then I need them to have some input. I need to know what they think about the Queen. I need to know what they want to sing about. And all these responses came back to me. And I know at the same time, there was a, a lot of uh, stories came from residents all around as well. The thing that came across the most after reading all these comments was that it didn't matter whether they were young or old, she was clearly a role model. That sense of being a role model came across in comments and stories. So that really became the, the, the core of the song. Like anything, when you're doing music, you, 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 you're always advised, go back to the source. Well, the source in this case is the Queen, and everybody associates the Queen with the National Anthem. So I started with the National Anthem. I thought, you know, I wonder if I could put a tune that would fit against this. And then I thought, no, I don't, didn't want to change what people already know. But that music already gave me a, a, the sense of a chord sequence that would be connected to the National Anthem. And then that leads me into a more poppy sort of style that I know the kids would like. And I knew I wanted it to start. People, people everywhere say thank you. Because although all the comments and the stories have been about the Queen, the thing that had come across was that everybody was talking about their heart, how they felt. So this song was clearly something, it's, it's, it's a gesture, it was a feeling from the people. It's a big ask. You want to write something that Her Majesty would enjoy, and you want to write something that all the kids are going to enjoy singing. Um, so that's what we've tried to do. And uh, like I say, the feedback so far has been really positive. So I'm really very excited to see how it all goes on the night. I'm Phil Anderson. I was a police sergeant working um, in the Royalty and Diplomatic Protection Department in 1982. And that's when I got the chance to go and work at Balmoral Castle while the Queen was in residence along with all the other members of the Royal Family and the Prime Minister. We were living in Barkingside with our two sons and my wife was pregnant with the third. This chance came up to get asked, do you want to go to Balmoral for five weeks? So I did have to check with the wife, obviously. But it was a yes, go, go. 
They just recently had a, an improvement of their security. I'd only been updated on it the day I arrived, which was the very last day of August. I was just looking at this system and the, the Queen walked in and just said, can you uh, explain this new system to me? And I thought, I've only just learnt it myself. So I went through explaining what all the different alarms were. She looked at me and she said, uh, they're no good. I've had them all covered over, she says, because my grandson keeps running around pressing them all and, he, and him and his friends just think it's great fun to keep pressing these alarms. I'm Kenneth Gaunt, I'm a volunteer at the Kenneth Moore Theatre where I've been for 12 years. I was one of the lucky ones who went to the Royal Garden Party in 1997. That particular day, it poured a rain. So it was all in the garden, there was a few of us standing over the big oak tree, and Her Majesty and Prince Philip came over, and she said to us all, Oh, I thought that tree would come in use. And we were standing there drowned as rats. It was an experience I shan't forget. Hello there, my name is uh, Simon Litt. I'm the Valentine's Park Manager. At the moment we're standing in the Diamond Jubilee Dry Garden. It was opened by Her Majesty the Queen on the 29th of March 2012. The day itself was very much like today, very nice and sunny. The Queen's car came in through the bandstand entrance and then she drove through the park, parks just before the, uh, the Ha Ha. I met the Queen as she came out of the, of the mansion and then on the way down to the Dry Garden she asked me, uh, did, did I think that the park would recover from, from, from all the people standing on the grass and all the planting? Which I said, yes, I th the ground's quite firm in Valentine's. When we were in front of the dry garden, she asked me if, if, if I thought I'd need to ever water the garden, which I said, hopefully not, and we never have done. The Duke was running slightly late. The dry garden had actually been officially opened. The Duke came along and said, oh, you've opened it. Let's go now. <laughs> My name is Jason Rose uh, and I'm an artist and an art tutor. I've had this studio for about 13 years, um, ever since the mansion was renovated. Maybe about six months before she came, I was asked if I, would, if I wanted to meet the Queen. I said, yeah, absolutely. And that they wanted an artist in the mansion to be doing a portrait as she was walking around. They asked me to choose the model, so I chose my son. He's 25 now, so he was 15 then. I was downstairs. Um, standing with the easel and Alex was in front of me by the fireplace and yeah it was a kind of surreal experience you know you think wow this is the most famous woman in the world she was asking me about the studio is you know is there a lot of light here and and then she was chatting with Alex I, th I think she asked him should you not be at school or something like that because he was wearing his uniform and he said well uh, you know they let me have the day off because if I advertise a school with a school uniform and she laughed anyway but it was great it was just a really Really lovely, yeah, really lovely experience. I got to meet the Queen because my granddad was chairman of Motability, the charity, and I had been using the scheme through my parents since I was about seven or eight. At the time, my job was with Motability, uh, the charity which provides cars to disabled people. I was the director there between 2004 and 2009. On a number of occasions, uh, we met the Queen, which was a good part of the job. It was their 30th anniversary as a charity, and they invited a member of the royal family to come to the ceremony and the anniversary event. Um, but they needed a young girl who benefited from the scheme to present a posy to the Queen on the day. And somebody said, well, it would be nice if we could have somebody young to do it. I immediately thought of my granddaughter, Molly, which had a particular poignancy because the genetic disorder she had would one day mean that she would probably be in a wheelchair for at least part of all of the time and would qualify for a car under the Motability Scheme. So on the day we went to the Royal Chelsea Hospital. I had the posy and I also had a present, which I later learned was a motability paperweight. So I went up and I, I gave a little curtsy and then I gave her the flowers and then I turned back to mum who had the, the, pre, the paperweight and I gave her the present. And she turned back to Prince Philip and she went, 
Oh, Philip, it's like Christmas. <laughs> and the Queen was, as always, lovely with Molly. So it was a really lovely occasion for us all. It was just a really nice moment to know that she took an interest in this charity that at the time was important to me, but I didn't necessarily understand how important. It's only really as I've got older that the charity just continues to be my freedom. And some years later, there was a ceremony at Westminster Hall. And when the Queen came to speak to us, and I immediately said, you'll be glad to know, Your Majesty, that Molly, who gave you the posy when we were at the Chelsea Hospital, is now driving her own motability car to go to university. And the Queen said, oh, that's lovely. But my wife, of course, told me out off afterwards and said, how could you expect the Queen to remember that one occasion? So I said, well, she said, it was lovely that she had a motability car, so I was very happy with that. Although some of the day is a bit of a blur for me as a 12 year old, it's one of those days that when I look back on it, it just has this like glowy sheen on it that's just really lovely to look back on and talk about. about tonight, I'm feeling quite nervous, but also really excited. I feel like someone important, which makes me kind of like have a beautiful feeling inside me because that song is really important to some people. Why we thank 